Hello, and welcome back once again to Tom Talk Steam. In this mini episode, I'm here with Ryan Parrott, a TV slash comics writer whose work includes Boom Studios Power Rangers, TMNT, and Rogue Sun, the newest addition to Image Comics' revamped superhero universe. So, Ryan, as is tradition, let me ask you, what did you have for breakfast this morning? What did I have for breakfast this morning? Um, what did I have for breakfast? I actually, you, oh man, the last three days I have made a breakfast sandwich, which is like the greatest thing I've ever made. It's a brioche bun with egg whites and turkey and chicken better and with a little uh like hot uh honey mustard sauce on it and it's like three days in a row i had it and today i was like i can't do four days in a row because i'm gonna, <laughs> gonna put on 40 pounds but uh so that was what i made the last three days today i think i just had something at starbucks which is like a almond croissant <laughs> yeah, that sounds really good though i'm Not so bad. jealous because like i've been trying to eat better so it's always like you know brown bread with butter for the last like three months or something so it's always just so sad so when i ask people like well, yeah, for breakfast and it's just like it's either something amazing or it's something like horrendous like like this yeah, really like in between. yeah exactly i get to hear um everyone's breakfast um you know experiences even if i can't have them myself yeah well i, I went online and like learned how to actually cook eggs properly we have to cook on like oh, a really right. low heat and with like a little spatula and like slowly make it and like it changed my world because it's like oh my god like eggs were good i just was making them <laughs> terribly so yeah there we go um right wonderful so my first question because you are actually the first writer i've had on the show um we've had artists and we've had artists that went on to become writers but not while they were on the show so i'd really really like to know um what was your first published comic uh, and when did it like start feeling real like the, the whole <laughs> the whole situation you know when did it start feeling like oh this is like really happening <laughs> oh it still doesn't feel real but um <laughs> Uh, my first published comic book was, I think it was Gates of Gotham, Batman Gates of Gotham number three, which what? is a pretty nice way to start. Mm -hmm. um, my buddy, so I, I was I was working as an assistant. I like to tell people I was working as an assistant at Bad Robot. I was J.J. Abrams assistant at the oh, time. Cool. Yeah. And so I was trying to work in the film and TV world. And my buddy, Kyle, who I'd known in college, was like he'd been writing Kyle Higgins as people probably know who he is. Oh, yeah. um, He'd been writing. He'd been writing comic books for a little while, um, just not not too long. And he called me one day and was like, "Hey, man, I, I got um, Nightwing and Deathstroke on like the same day." Like he was like, "I I went from writing like a mini series to doing two like monthly books for the New Fifty Two, and he was like, and I I have to finish Batman Gates of Gotham in like they have to double ship. We have to finish it in two in like two weeks. Do you do you think you could come on and help me like just write it really quickly?" And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, man, that'd be cool. So I went on and I would, every day I'd finish work at like five and then I'd drive over to his apartment on the way home and I'd be there till like nine or ten. And we'd be writing just sort of on his computer together. And we wrote both of those issues. I think we wrote two issues of comic books, in like two and a half weeks. It was really fast. Wow. But that was my first. And then I remember like the Batman Batman came out, like the first line of dialogue I wrote was for ba Dick Grayson as Batman. And I was that like, well, so it's cool. all downhill from here. <laughs> that is such yeah. a neat way to start. That is so cool. Yeah. So that was that was the first that was the first thing. And then I remember I think the coolest thing was like going into the this that you go into the comic book shop, and you like wander down the aisle and you find it and then like you go up and then you have to like kind of pretend like you want the guy to ask you if you wrote it. You know, <laughs> like it's just like <laughs> it's very it's very surreal. But like That's that so was cool. I think that was the. The best thing ever I was I remember I went in one time and like I had like four books on the shelves and I was like, wow, that, that's, that's so probably cool. the moment I felt like I made it a little bit. I was like, oh, mm. wow. I'm like a thing on here. And then a guy recognized me. The, the cash register person recognized me, which is <laughs> never happens as a comic book writer. And he was mm -hmm. like, are you writing parrot? And I was like, oh God, this is weird. So yeah. <laughs> That's so sick. Yeah. I sometimes I definitely have this like fantasy of like the minute I get to like write a character, like saying something is like when I know like something has went wrong, like some editor is going to get fired. You know, if I'm able to like, <laughs> you know, if Spider-Man says something that I wrote, then like somebody like didn't do that job right is like, so it's, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, so yeah, uh, specifically about Rogue Sun, um, I'm really, really interested to hear um, how exactly the project came to be because I, I was really, really curious in particular um, did the success of Radiant Black uh, impact the pitch or getting it greenlit? Um, it, it, I think it was actually just more to motivate me to do it um, mm. because Kyle had Kyle was already working on Radiant Black for a while. So he was working on Radiant Black about a year or so um, 
like a year before it came out and I was, and he, we were at a football game together and he was like, he was telling me what he was working on. And he goes, you know, I'm having a really good time working on people at image are really cool. He's like, I know you've always wanted to do a superhero book of your own. You should do it with image. And I was like, no, nah, they wouldn't want me like, come on. And he's like, no, man. He's like, they, they're, they're, they're really excited about, you know, going back to their roots of the superhero universe stuff. He's like, you, do you have any ideas? And I was like, well, and I kind of threw like this half baked idea that I had, which was sort of, you know, about a kid who sort of, you know, like the sort of like rebellious teenager flash Thompson style character. Cause I really like that idea of doing like a different, like everybody I've seen a lot of versions of like the Peter Parker mm -hmm. sort of like miles Morales characters, like the down on their luck, you know, tough kid who, who, be, who becomes strong. And I was like, what about somebody who was kind of a bad person who gets powers? And like, so I had this idea of like, what happens if, you know, what if, if he were to inherit his, his powers from his father, he didn't even know. And like had in order to learn, use those powers, had to learn about the guy that he'd hated his entire life. And I was like, that's a cool father son story. And I really mm -hmm. like that. And, and so I pitched that. He's like, you should totally do that. It'd be awesome. It's like, and, and then I was like, well, all right. And then when radiant black hit, like when it hit hard, um, I think we were already down the road. I think, it, I think oh, we yeah. were already had, we were already like talking about it. And then when it hit, I was like, he's like, now we're going to do this. And then I think well, the only thing it really changed was, it changed the way we released the book because at one point we were talking about like having rogue sun come out bef before supermassive so it could lead up to like you know the way you do normal the crossovers is you have two books that are established then they kind of cross over in 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 one book right but we ultimately felt that like it might actually be better to uh, to just come out of the gate as a crossover in a way that would sort of like it would springboard rogue sun as opposed to having rogue sun have to sort of do its own heavy lifting beforehand if that makes sense oh, you yeah. just thought it might be and also it's like cool it's like if, if you like radiant black you can pick this book up and like oh there's some cool characters i already like as opposed to you had to go like my book first and then go okay you know what i mean and then kind of mm -hmm. find your way into wrote then radiant black so that was the only thing it, it sort of changed was it and that was it didn't last very long but yeah it's a it's it's a you know the whole the whole world of uh Kyle's calling me right now. No, I can't talk to you right now, man. <laughs> Hi, <Kyle>. um, <laughs> uh, but like, I think that's the only thing that like the hard part about comic books is like what I've learned, like in doing a new book by yourself is like when I, every book I'd done before at DC or boom or at um, I, uh, dynamite or any of those slices, like you just write the script and you hand it off to your editor and then they handle everything. Right. But mm -hmm. in this world, I got to handle everything. And that's the part that I'm still figuring out. So that's the hard part. But I'm but thankfully same thing. Kyle had done this so many times before. He has been a godsend to try to, mm. you know, keep me in track. That's interesting. It's been actually kind of cool hearing about Kyle secondhand from you and Michael now of like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, oh, Kyle did this, Kyle did that. And it's like building up this image of like, wow, this guy sounds great. <laughs> oh, he's, he's great. He's, he's the best, man. I, I will say this about Kyle. He is the, if you spend, I, I've spent uh, like four or five days with him sometimes at Comic Cons and like in the stretch of four days, he will come up with 20 new ideas on how to build out the, the world of radiant black he will give you three or four ideas for your book he will come up with a, a t-shirt design and a new poster like he'll come up with everything it's 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 relentlessly awesome and makes you feel like you're just like not getting up and doing enough in your day um <laughs> but like you said about michael because I, I know michael was on this mm -hmm. michael is the unsung hero of rogue sun if you ever create best advice i give to anybody who's going to create their own editor create their own book find an editor who knows your weaknesses and can save you from yourself because that's what Michael does. He saves me every day from my own lethargy and forgetfulness and just keeps me honest. And is also such a great person to come to when you have story problems and issues like an editor. Editors are the unsung heroes of comic books, especially good ones. They will make uh, bad books. Good. Not to say that Rick, Rick sounds bad, but it's better <laughs> because Michael is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that completely. Yeah, I just was thinking with the um like linking it to to the radiant black thing is like because it's like yeah, like I could see image is pushing this sort of vibe, this superhero like renaissance of image. Um and I was really curious like yeah, like was because of because of radiant black, but it's interesting to hear um that it was sort of just like I guess I wouldn't say a happy accident, but it was already in the pipeline. Um yeah, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, so I was really, really lucky enough to be able to read uh, some of Rogue Sun, and uh, I did really enjoy it. I thought it was really fun. Uh, and I really wanted to ask um, the saying, it's set in New Orleans. And I wanted yeah. to I wanted to know, is that like, is there something like personal for you to like set it there? Or was it just something that you'd not seen before? Because I haven't seen it before. Um, and it just struck me as like an interesting setting for a superhero story. 
Well, that's it's funny. Um, and thank you for reading it. I'm, I appreciate you liked it because I think you might be the first person I've talked to that 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 has read it, which is it's cool. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so New Orleans, I picked it for like two reasons. One, because it already has. So I mean, the first reason I give the personal reason um, was uh, my wife worked uh, was a writer on the show Preacher um, for oh, a little while. Cool. Yeah, she's much better than me. And <laughs> she when she was doing her episode of television, she uh, they she had a hotel room and she they shot in New Orleans. And mm-hmm. she said, hey, would you be interested in, you know, flying out here and just writing? Because I was writing at the time. She's like, you can write from the hotel here and just hang out during the week. And you mm-hmm. can, you know, I, I won't be around, but you can just wander the city. And so I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So I, I flew out to New Orleans for two weeks. And for two weeks straight, I just wandered New Orleans and I, we went to a bunch of places and, and we just had like, I just, I really got to just sort of explore and hang out and I fell in love with it. I just think it's one of the coolest and most amazingly interesting looking cities. I think it's been in a lot of movies and TV because, because of like, you know, tax incentives, but it, it has such, it has such a unique look. Every, mm-hmm. if you see a New Orleans building, you know, it's New Orleans and which is pretty cool. I actually ended up proposing to her there at the oh, in, in the park there in the park in in issue three uh, of Rogue Sun. There is Abaddon Park, and that actually that's where I proposed to her. So because I just loved it, and so we're gonna go back whenever we get a chance. But that was the first reason was I just I just got to spend time in a city, and I never really got to do that. And I just thought there's this, and then the other reason is it has this undercurrent of sort of the the, the fringes of the supernatural. It, it has mm-hmm. you know they have we did we did a ghost tour when we were there. There's a lot of like sort of ancient voodoo. Stuff talk and iconography that's still around and so like that so there's a lot there's already sort of this this undercurrent of of this connection to the supernatural also mm. i think the fact that all because of the way that the ground in new orleans sets because you because it's so far below sea level you can't bury anybody so you have all these incredible um graveyards that all are all above ground graves and so like just the settings of that thing i think just creates this sense of a connection to something else. And I just thought, I want to use that. I want it. I want the place to be, I want the place I want, if I'm going to do a story about somebody fighting the forces of the supernatural, it's like what better place to set it than New Orleans. Yeah, no, I, I feel that. Um, yeah. It just struck me, like I said, cause there's always New York or there's always like, even like um, the West coast, you know what I mean? Like is like, you see it quite often. Um, but New Orleans struck me as, as interesting. Um, yeah. I was curious to know if there was a yeah, i hope i like, i hope i do it justice i mean people are gonna be like you were there for two weeks you better be able to write it better than that man but like I, it's a wonderful city and then mm-hmm. you should if you haven't gone you should definitely check it out it's pretty cool maybe maybe when when i can <laughs> when we all can yeah, yeah right yeah <laughs> but um yeah no it's interesting to hear like the um the flash thompson influence i definitely picked up on that from uh, issue one and two it was sort of that feeling not to like spoil anything where i was like oh, this guy's like a dick and then like i realized like oh yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's the that's the point like you know I'm, I'm glad that like i've gotten this like feeling immediately you know it's like it's so much better to have like a strong reaction than like have that sort of like yeah like a milk toast sort of like he's kind of nice sort of like reaction to someone um but like yeah the the father-son dynamic um of like you know, like this, this lineage is also like, um, is, is, is kind of like the, the, the driving force of the book. Um, were there any stories or anywhere like that you particularly got influence from there? Or is it just like a, a sort of writing trope that you were particularly fond of? Well, I think I've always been a, I've always had a fondness for like legacy characters. Like I, I remember like the first time I read Matt Fraction's Iron Fist, and his oh, yeah. Iron Fist run is so cool because all of a sudden you're like, wait, there's been people who have been Iron Fist all through time. And all of a sudden it just it creates this weird it, 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 it I think it makes the power and the superhero sort of like the, the power elemental. And then you realize that it can kind of, you know, I think so many people like for, for a lot of superheroes, we sort of associate a certain superhero with a certain, you know, I mean, for the most part, like Batman is Bruce Wayne and 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 not always. But you know what I mean? Like there's like these yeah. certain characters that we associate. But I love that idea that like this power goes into the hands of different people and means different things throughout time. And like Iron Fist did that really well. I remember one of my favorite issues of Spawn when I was a kid was when they go back in time, the Neil Gaiman issue where he goes back and you meet oh, yeah. evil Spawn. And I was like, wait, there's been Spawns all through history. <laughs> like, it's just like it, what it does is just it instantly creates like a length of, of it creates these like weird string of pearls of story and creates a world. And I love that idea. And I just thought also, I think some of that came from Abel, my artist design when he drew him. Cause I, I kind of pitched it as like, yeah, it's a night that's on fire. And mm-hmm. it's just cause I thought it was a cool, <laughs> a cool thing. At one point I was like, we should call him Nightfire, And everybody was like, that's no, a terrible name. We're not going <laughs> to call him Nightfire." And I was like, okay. But um, I was like, he, when he drew him, I was like, he looks like a real knight. What if there was 
a real what if that's how old uh, this thing is right, okay. and so that was the moment i was like oh this could be really cool and and it, and it fit really well with the idea of 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 marcus passing passing the baton sort of sense to dylan and so i don't know i just like all that i love the idea that i could i, I could literally do a, like 10 stories of like different you know rogue sons all through time i think that's such a fun stuff and and it just creates a it just i, I love that it creates an instant mythology i think that's that's really fun that feeling of lineage and history yeah like making the world feel lived in. I get that. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think to to try and wrap everything up a little bit, um, I'm really curious because if I'm not mistaken, this is is this your biggest like sort of outing with like, yeah, create your own, like your own characters and stuff like that. Like, um, would you say this is like your biggest sort of like project in comics? Ooh, I mean, it's definitely the one that's the most... Um... That's all me. Like that yeah. sounds bad because that makes it sound like I'm doing everything. <laughs> no, I just mean it's the one that's like the it, it, like you know, like I said before, like whenever I've done most of the books I've ever done have either been licensed comic. I've been licensed comic books. I've written mm -hmm. you know I've written Power Rangers for a really long time, and I wrote Army of Darkness for a little while. Um, and so like when I've dealt with other people's books with other people's rules, and mm -hmm. the thing that I've sort of slowly learned by doing creator own books is that you have to kind of create the structure yourself, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to find. And so that, I think that's the hardest part about this whole thing is I was like, okay, what's my character, you know, what's his group of, you know, what's his normal life versus what's his superhero life? What's the ultimate story I'm telling? Like, did you have to sort of start planning all that stuff out? Because, mm -hmm. you know, usually when you're like, it wasn't hard. I know the voices of the Power Rangers. I, I was a kid. I, I heard them. But like this one, I actually have to create them. And so that's by far the hardest part of it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and also like when you're doing creator own, like you have to come up, like you're doing everything. You're, you're, you're assembling your creative team. You're dealing with marketing. You're doing your, uh, you're you, like, you're thinking about covers, like finding artists to do variant covers. is like, that's been a whole, I didn't realize how much time that took. Mm -hmm. Um, the logistics of marketing a book is really hard. Like getting people to actually read it because when you put out a Power Ranger book, it's like people either like Power Rangers or they don't. It's pretty easy. It's like, it, it, you know, people, there's a big fan base that's already there. For me, I've got to kind of come in and be like, hey, I've got this new thing. I hope you guys really like it. So I think from all of those elements, that's been the hardest and most um, educational part of it all. But I think one of the coolest thing about it is, is like in the times when I'm able to sort of like put the, write the script and put it off and actually sit down and start thinking about the world. The mo the coolest thing about it is when you create your own book, I think the, the number one, there's a, a, an old adage I heard a long time ago that I really liked, which was like, the minute you learn the rules, it's your obligation to break them. <laughs> and I feel like after having done Power Rangers for so long, I know the rules now. I, even mm -hmm. I know, my, you read my books, you'll see structure that I do over and over and over again, because sometimes that's just, you get into a pattern and that thing works and you got to get that script done. And so what I've been really trying to do with Rogue Sun was, understand where my patterns are, understand the tropes that I use that I, that even I fall into and try and break those because I think you owe it to like, if you want to read a good superhero book, there's plenty of options. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to ask you to go read a new one with characters that you don't know, I owe it to you to do stuff with the narrative that, you know, I probably wouldn't have the freedom to do on a licensed book. So that's the cool thing. It's a freeing, it's a little scary. Cause you're like, Whoa, what am I going to do? How do I do something new when everything's been done? It feels like, but like trying to find a new, find a, find a, find something that you've always wanted to do from your bag of tricks. You're like, Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Oh, they'll never let us do that. Do that now. So I think that's, that's the other part of the hard thing is like trying to find that. And that's where Kyle, I think has been such a helpful thing is like, I, if you've read radiant black, like he does some crazy stuff in those first five or six issues. And so when he, when, when I read those, I'm like, all right, the, the 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 bar's been raised i gotta <laughs> i gotta try to reach it so like that's that's the fun part of it all that's awesome brilliant well for the final thing i'd just like to ask uh where can we find you what, what should we follow you on oh um i am on twitter uh at that ryan parrot uh two r's two t's um it always sounds so pretentious when i say it out loud. <laughs> um i was like that ryan parrot but i thought yeah <laughs> uh but yes yeah, so i'm on there um available 24 7 uh mm -hmm. but yes that's 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 the only place right now i'm, I'm not on instagram and all that stuff and we'll, we'll soon be able to find your books in February, right? Uh, February 19th, I think it is. Um, uh, February, uh, maybe if you're uh, for out here in America, uh, in America, it's uh, February 23rd is the release of Rogue Sun and February 16th is the release of Supermassive. Got you. There you go. Well, that's where we can find you. Thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you, man. Hello. Welcome to the end of the show. I just want to say thank you again to Ryan for letting me speak to him about Rogue Sun, and also letting me read the first two issues before anyone else. If you're interested in hearing more about Image Comics' new superhero universe, 
you can check out an interview I did with Michael Basutal upon the channel, the editor slash designer of Radiant Black. It's full of insights into the creative process of that book and image comics in general. Feel free to follow Coco Comics on Twitter, at Coco Comics, to keep up to date on all the crazy little shenanigans that we get up to, eh? Until next time, though, that's it. Thanks for listening, and have a good day.